Yes, good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're joining us from, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Peter Ture from Business Review, and I'll be your host today. It is our pleasure to have with us Shaw's Electric today, who will be presenting the, presenting the webinar title, Nuclear Products and Services for a New Decade of Nuclear Power. In this case, what I would also like to say also is that our guest speaker today is James Dean, who is from Nuclear Projects from Shell's Electric. So um, I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar platform on 24. So you'll notice that the actual webinar is browser-based. So if you disconnect for any reason, please just click on the link that you receive by email to rejoin the session. In order for us to ask the questions, you can send them in via the questions widget. Just type them into the box at the top right hand corner of your screen and click Submit. We will then allocate some time at the end of the session to address any questions or thoughts that you may have. Please also use the help widget if you require any assistance. You can move, resize, or maximize any of the windows in front of you to get a better view. But for now, please allow me to hand over to our speaker, James Dean, over to you. Yes. Good morning, everyone from, uh, from beautiful New England here in the United States. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about motors and motor services and repairs for the nuclear power industry. Um, the Schultz Electric facility is located in New Haven, Connecticut, in the United States. And we have a lot of slides to go over. Um, some of them today, I will not spend a lot of time on them as they contain uh, a lot of technical detail. If you have any questions regarding those, please feel free to ask a question uh, with the widget during, the, during this, the presentation, or you can submit them after the presentation. So we'll get started. Schultz Electric was founded in 1927 as an industrial motor repair facility. Uh, we have been doing motor repairs and supplying new safety related and environmentally qualified motors for almost three decades. And 2014, Schultz Electric was acquired by the Timken Company, and we are a division of the Timken Company today. Um, Schultz Electric has many firsts in the industry in the United States, uh, repair, rewind, and something that is different for the European community, which is we do our own uh, radiological decontamination as well. And we have a couple of slides on that. We'll talk about those in detail. And additionally, um, Schultz Electric carries 45 million US dollars in nuclear liability insurance. So as you can see, uh, Schultz Electric is now part of the Timken organization and we are under the motor and generator repair services of Timken. We have many locations under the Timken brand in the United States and worldwide. And we have been reaching out with our new motors and motor repair services as well in the nuclear power industry in Europe. So our core competency, obviously we're talking about motors today, but under our other business groups, we also can supply and service couplings as well as gearboxes. In many of your power plants, uh, some critical motors will also have a gearbox attached to it. And in boiling water reactors, one typical example is a control rod drive pump. Some uh, feed pumps as well also have gearboxes, so we're able to service the entire drivetrain. So Schultz Electric, even though it's being a relatively small company, we've done lots of firsts in the nuclear power industry. Uh, we have qualified in the 1990s our own environmentally qualified insulation systems, and we'll talk about some of those in detail later. Uh, we are the only facility, at least that I know of, that repair limiter motor operated valve motors. Um, and in conjunction with the boiling water reactor owners group and pressurized water reactors owners group here in the United States, we developed the nuclear MOV magnesium rotor inspection program. 
if you are a member of either one of those organizations, you can access that document and that document number is included uh, in the presentation later. We also are capable of supplying new safety related motors and gearboxes as well. And we have done that for several nuclear utilities here in the United States. Um, we have not supplied any gearboxes in Europe yet, uh, but we are certainly capable of doing so. And one of the unique aspects of Schultz Electric is that we can repair and re rewind all nuclear OEM motors, regardless of the manufacturer. Uh, one of our great achievements here, and we will talk about some, uh, some activities related to plant life extension, or like what we call PLEX, P-L-E-X. We assisted Turkey Point Plant here in the United States as the first nuclear power plant worldwide to receive an 80-year life. Here in the U.S., the typical licensing is for a 40-year life. Uh, Turkey Point, about seven or eight years ago, was able to achieve a license extension to 60 years. And with their motor program, we helped them also to achieve an 80-year plant life extension. As you can see from this slide, we are very involved in the industry aspects. Uh, we have sat on many EPRI committees. We have been the principal investigator uh, for many EPRI uh, guidance documents. And for myself as well, I happen to be the chairman of the standard for motors here in the United States, the nuclear standard, which is IEEE 334. One aspect of our business unit is frame agreements. Here in the U.S., we have about 68% of the nuclear fleet under what we call frame agreements. These agreements are for repair of existing motors, whether they be safety-related motors, environmentally qualified motors, uh, motor operator valve motors, uh, fan motors, which are uh, for ventilation, or critical motors such as residual heat removal or heater drain pump motors. Basically, the way we have those set up here in the U.S. is we have a predefined repair uh, work scope. And with that work scope and a commitment under a contract, we're able to buy, provide special pricing and special delivery for that. Uh, we have also implemented rebate programs here in the U.S which will help control uh, power plant budgets. And this is also a huge savings on procurement engineering and supply chain resources, since all of the aspects of the frame agreement are agreed up front. Um, as well, we provide outage support and planning, which is critical uh, to plant operation and continued operation as well. So we do have some specific experience with our friends uh, north of us with the CANDU Owners Group. Um, we have uh, developed some special motors for them over the years, and we are on their approved suppliers list. This is a specialty motor uh, that we designed and rewound. This was a um, ventilation motor. Uh, as you can see from the slide, uh, we changed the motor uh, uh, quite a bit. We installed terminal blocks for um, for the vibration monitoring and also the bearing temperature sensing. This was a new design that they have implemented in Canada. Um, it's not clear whether the other CANDU plants worldwide have implemented this design as of yet, but this is just one example of our support for our customers. So I'm not going to go through this in great detail. You can look through this uh, at your convenience, but we do have a relatively large facility uh, and we have all the typical ovens, uh, VPI tanks, uh, winding areas that we have, uh, clean rooms to perform motor rewind and also for new motors. Our nuclear quality program uh, is under the U.S. Uh, requirements here, uh, which is 10 uh, CFR 50 Appendix B. Some of you may be familiar with this requirement. We also have an ASME NQA1 quality program, and we comply with 10 CFR Part 21. 
even though 10 CFR 50 Appendix B and 10 CFR Part 21 are U.S. regulations, some, some utilities and some customers in Europe also invoke those requirements on us. We have been audited by NUPIC. I do know that some of your, some European utilities are members of NUPIC. And if you are, our audit is available on the NUPIC website through your local NUPIC representative. We have also been audited by the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission Vendor Inspection Branch. And that audit is also publicly available. Uh, and if you like, we could even send that audit to you. Uh, we have a dedication program that meets all the EPRI requirements and uh, shipping and storage in a, is in accordance with U.S. nuclear standards. For our non-safety related projects, we implement ISO 9001 for those. So again, this is just to highlight some of our facility test capabilities. I'm not going to go uh, spend much time on this slide. Uh, but we have all the equipment that is calibrated and traceable uh, back to uh, NIST standards here in the United States. We have a large selection of dynamometers uh, at Schultz Electric. Uh, we can test vertical motors. Uh, we can test MOV motors. And we can even test fan motors, which are totally enclosed air over motors as well. One of the unique things about us is we actually put the motor under a mechanical load if required by customer specification, or if we're providing a new motor, we will put it under mechanical, mechanical load and verify all the operating characteristics of the motor. This is a typical speed torque curve that's generated by our, by our data acquisition system. This is highlighting our vertical load testing capabilities. Uh, not many motor facilities actually in the US have this capability to actually mechanically load vertical motors. We are one of the few. This is highlighting our test setup for our small motor load testing, as well as motor operated valve motors. And as well, we have the capability to test AC and DC motors. So we do supply motors as safety related. These are tip uh, smaller motors. Uh, we do larger motors as well, but this slide is highlighting our capability for what NEMA frame motors, which are generally less than 250 horsepower um, in size. So as far as our repair services, uh, we can basically repair, refurbish, or remanufacture any motor in the industry. Uh, there's only a few exceptions to that. And the term remanufacturing may be new to most of you, and we will talk about that a little bit further into the presentation. One of the unique things that we are finding about the European industry is generally contaminated motor repair is performed on site at your nuclear power plants. Here in the US, Schultz Electric has the capability and has the license to be able to accept radiologically contaminated motors and work on them in our facility hot. Uh, some of the unique things that we do is also emergency ge uh, generator, emergency diesel generator, I'm sorry, repair and inspection. And we are currently just finishing up a project for Columbia Station here in the US where we, we rewound the entire generator. And we do perform our own motor seismic qualification by analysis in our facility. This is highlighting our motor decontamination facility that we talked about earlier. Uh, these are our transport containers that we would normally transport these. Uh, we have transported radiologically contaminated motors via ship of to and from Europe. This is highlighting our nuclear storage capability. These are the raw materials that we use to rewind and, and to wind brand new motors. These are all controlled in accordance with our nuclear quality assurance program.
In addition to our safety related and non safety related motor repair services, we also offer non safety related motor repair services as well. Typical in use applications for these would be feed water, condensate, heater drain pump, and circulating water pump. Um, we can repair and rewind almost any motor of any size in, for those applications. Our real core competency is in our environmentally qualified and safety related pump and fan motor repairs. Uh, uh, several OEMs in the industry do not offer motor repairs uh, for, their, uh, for their equipment, but Schultz Electric does. Some of the typical applications that we're, we utilize, uh, that we repair motors for, is service water, component cooling water, residual heat removal, and the list goes on. So how do we do that? A lot of times people ask, well, you're not the original equipment manufacturer of the motor, so how do you, how do you know how to rewind the motor? Rewinding of motors, electric motors, has been around for almost as long as motors have been in existence, which is approximately 200 years. What we do is we reverse engineer the winding design. What this does is it ensures that the rewind duplicates the original winding design. It ensures that the motor, when it's rewound, is a like for like. So therefore, there's no design requirements, there's no modifications that need to be done or engineering analysis that needs to be done by the customer. In the end, we will perform either a full load or a no load test that will ensure that the repaired motor or rewound motor is indeed meet the nameplate data of the original motor. All of these processes and procedures are controlled within our quality program at utilizing nuclear trained personnel. So this will give you some idea of the process. Uh, a motor would, origin, uh, would initially come in, we would burn out the winding. Um, what you don't see is between these two processes is where the reverse engineering of the winding happens. The winding is then mechanically stripped from the stator. Then the stator is deblasted blasted before you install the new insulation system. Basically, this process brings the stator frame back to like new condition. And part of that process is also doing a core loss test. You do not want to rewind a motor if the core has problems, if, if you have uh, higher core loss than specification requires. If it does have higher than specification requirements, the core can also be reverse engineered and replaced as well. So part of the process now is you have the reverse engineering data, you build the coils, you wind the motor, you put it in the VPI tank. VPI stands for vacuum pressure impregnation. What happens is you initially draw a vacuum on the, on the tank, on the vessel, and then you flood it with resin, which drives the resin into the insulation system. This is post VPI. And then, of course, in the nuclear world, the job is not done until all the paperwork is done. So other repair services that can be performed on motors includes concentricity checks and repairs, custom manufacturing of obsolete motor parts. Um, on normal occasion, we will reverse engineer an in-bell or in-bracket and send it out and have a new one cast. That is a common, uh, common repair that we do. As we talked about earlier, we can do rotor and stator repairs, including new cores and lamination and in-bell resleeving, which is the repair of the bearing surfaces for the in-bell. A lot of times customers believe that a motor may be economically irreparable. For us, that's really very, very seldom that that is true. So if you have an issue, you have a motor that, is, uh, that has gone through a catastrophic failure, most likely it can still be repaired. 
So one of the things that we want to discuss here, and I have a case study embedded within this presentation. I'm not going to go over every technical detail, but we thought that it was important that the European community understand a process that we've been using very successfully here in the United States, which helps support plant life extension and aging management initiatives here. Uh, we, it is called remanufacturing. And remanufacturing utilizes surplus or legacy inventory and utilizing that motor, reverse engineering it, and then building a new motor from that. What does that provide the customer? A couple of key issues. It resolves obsolescence issues. I'm sure many of, uh, of you have had a motor fail or you go look for a critical spare and the motor is no longer available because the original motors were designed and built 30, 40, maybe even 50 years ago. The motor frames are likely not available anymore. So what we have done is we've developed a remanufacturing process where we find the proper frame and basically rebuild the motor. What that also does is it provides interchangeability with all the originally installed motors without plant modifications. And we all know that plant modifications are very costly. The design, design change process is very long, takes a lot of approval, and it's burdensome on plant operations. So this is a typical example of a customer that needed a spare motor. They did not have a frame. We found a, a frame that would fit. And as you can see, the condition of the motor was very poor. We brought the motor in and we, we developed some design drawings, but we brought the motor in and we performed inspections. Within those inspections, we determined what needed to be repaired or redesigned. So this, we're in the disassemble, inspect, and test phase. As you can see, the motor was in poor condition. Uh, we recommended to uh, replace uh, the shaft. I'm sorry, the shaft was in poor condition. We recommended to replace the shaft in this instance. So, in this particular case, the customer did have a spare stator. So we reverse engineered that stator. So we were ensured that we had the correct winding to be installed in the remanufactured motor. Here, we looked at the winding design. This is the reverse engineering of the winding. This was a, our as found data. This is our as left data. This ensures that the motor will perform as it's intended and perform its safety function. And of course, it gets reviewed and approved by engineering and quality assurance. This is the process of designing and building the new insulation system. As you can see, this is a form wound medium voltage motor. This is the raw coils. Here's the coils installed in the motor, the connection end uh, being connected uh, the VPI process, and for safety-related and environmentally qualified motors, we always build spare coils and do a destructive test dissection on them to ensure the quality and resin penetration of the coil. We always do in-process testing. This is a surge test of coils. And we spoke about replacing the shaft. This is the new shaft uh, drawing. And we took, we reverse engineered the shaft. Here's all the original dimensions and the replacement dimensions. So we ensure that all the fits for all the bearings, also for the rotor assembly are all proper. And here's some photos of remanufacturing or manufacturing a new shaft. And of course, you always have all the other accessories that are required to be installed. Uh, we procure these as commercial grade items and dedicate them for safety related use. So the final assembly and test on any remanufacturing project really proves out the design. So as you can see in the final assembly and test phase, there are 
a very detailed, very specific set of requirements um, that are proven in the end to ensure the design is correct. We perform a full load test on it to ensure that the speed torque curve, current, and all the nameplate data meets the customer requirement and the motor design requirement. This is, again, we're looking at a degraded voltage. This is a safety-related motor that is required to start at 75% and also survive a 75% voltage dip. We replicate that through our dynamometer system and prove out that data. And here is the data. So in the end, we tested the motor to full load. This is at 100% speed torque and we're verifying this is the pump curve so we're verifying that the motor will drive the pump and accelerate it properly here is our uh, speed torque test at 70 percent voltage to ensure that even at 70 percent voltage this is the motor curve this is the pump curve that the motor will still accelerate and drive the pump successfully at 70% rated voltage. And these are a plot of the various uh, speed versus torque uh, for the motor as required by specification. So here is the actual test setup for this particular motor and the test data. So that's a very, very high level uh, look at remanufacturing. And if you have any questions about some of that, then certainly please submit them during, uh, during the presentation. And if we can't get to all the questions during the presentation, we will respond to you afterwards. So what we're gonna talk about now is the environmentally qualified insulation systems that Schultz Electric has developed. Uh, we developed three unique uh, insulation systems uh, one for form wound machines, generally outside containment. These are your critical motors such as residual heat removal, core spray, high pressure core spray, uh, low pressure core spray. Those are all safety injection. Those are all those typical types of motors. Random wound continuous duty. Those would be like fan motors, a small pump motors, and MOV motors. For those of you that have not uh, ever seen a test lab, this is our form wound uh, machine on the left-hand photo inside the environmental chamber at Wiley Laboratories in Huntsville, Alabama, here in the US. Uh, this is our continuous duty system, and this is the MOV insulation system. Here, we are simulating a, a loss of coolant accident uh, after aging. So our, our qualification was governed obviously by US standards. We did this in the mid 1990s. And it's a little fuzzy, but if you, if you look, um, we have done some reconciliation for European standards. Uh, you may or may not know that IEC and IEEE have been working together to uh, develop dual logo standards. Uh, I happen to sit on that committee and we've been developing this for about six years now. So now IEEE 323, which we utilized as a requirement here, is also dual logo for IEC under 60780. So the new standard is IEEE, IEC, IEEE 60780323. You'll notice that in the US, we also have other daughter standards for specific types of equipment. Motors is IEEE 334. Currently, there is no dual logo standard under IEC. So for seismic, uh, we utilize IEEE 344. IEEE 344 for our seismic qualification. Now that standard also has a dual logo, it's IEC IEEE 60860, I think, dash 344. Regardless, that's a dual logo standard now that is in compliance with IEC and IEEE standards. 
some other typical standards that can be reconciled. NEMA MG1 is the U.S. standard for motors. That's an equivalent IEC 60034. And there's some other standards that are listed here. The, the point being, even though our qualification was done to, to U.S. standards and we supply motors to maybe U.S. standards and European standards, those standards can normally be reconciled, no problem. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the motor testing itself. To, do, to perform thermal endurance, which provides you your thermal classification, like class F or class H, you have to do a thermal endurance test. And this is how a thermal endurance test is done with motorettes and formats. These, for this insulation system, as we talked about earlier, this is our medium voltage, environmentally qualified. These are residual heat removal, low pressure core spray, high pressure core spray, low pressure safety injection are typical type applications. And these are typically above 350 horsepower. I didn't do the KW calculation, sorry, <laughs> uh, but about 350 horsepower. And it would be 6.3 kV for European standard. This is uh, uh, the insulation system being wound. As you can see, being wound, and this is after VPI process. This is the environmental parameters that this insulation system has been qualified to, and it should meet any BWR, PWR, and can do application. There may be other designs that we would have to look at, but it was designed for all of those type of light water generation two plants. Here is our loss of coolant accident profile. And again, these, this is a photo of the form wound insulation system being exposed to a loss of coolant accident inside the Wiley test lab. And this is post inspection after accident simulation. So this is our random wound insulation system that's suitable for outside containment. Um, if you have some questions about this, um, we can answer those. I'm just gonna go through this really quickly and explain to you what our unique design is here. Our unique design for random wound machines is called a tape coil system. If you notice, each individual coil is taped, right? Here is, this is the environment that is qualified to. I wanna to get to this example. This is our post loca inspections. Um, we talk about our tape coil system. Again, it's a picture of the tape coil system. This is post VPI. This is the slide I wanted to get to quickly. This is a standard random wound low voltage insulation system that you may get from most OEMs. As you can tell, none of the coils are taped, right? So what happens is you can see the failure right here in the center of the photograph where the winding basically exploded. So what happens, it, this is not good for reliability because when you get this overhang, what will happen is you will create vibration in the coil and eventually it will fail. With a taped coil system, it's much more rugged, much more mechanically stable and prevents that failure mechanism. So this is the difference between a nuclear designed low voltage insulation system and a non-nuclear designed low voltage insulation system. So the random wound, the MOV insulation system is basically the same. It's a random wound low voltage system. This was qualified for inside containment applications. And those of you that have limitor MOVs our EQ report exceeds the requirements of the limitor reports. This is our EQ parameters for our tests. This is our loss of coolant accident simulation for inside containment. As you can see, up to 425 degrees F peak. That was specifically done to ensure that we envelope 
the can-do reactor inside containment profiles. Here's some photos of the MOB motor test specimen inside the environmental chamber being tested, and of course, the post loca testing inspection. One of the unique things that we did, we talked about in belt sleeving repair earlier. If you notice on the lower photo, this is an in belt sleeve repair that we performed on this motor to ensure that our repair would survive a nuclear loss of coolant accident, which it did. Uh, so we validated this repair process for environmentally qualified motors during our qualification program. So for MOV motors, you also have to qualify to IEEE 382. 382 is for actuators line mounted. Motor operated valves are mounted usually on water and or steam lines, which can be subject to water hammer or, or steam hammer. So there's some unique requirements for MOV motors and our insulation system was qualified to that standard. We did talk about uh, Magnesium rotor MOVs earlier uh, in the presentation. Uh, this is something that Schultz Electric helped the industry develop. This is the report number, the topical report TP-09-005. If you are a member of the BWR owners group, you can uh, contact the owners group and they will be able to provide you with that report. The PWR owners group also has a report and we don't have that number on the slide, but if you would like that number, we can certainly uh, give that to you as well. So Schultz Electric adopted also an industry uh, rewind system here in the US that we helped EPRI develop. EPRI uh, attempted to develop five different insulation systems. Only three of those systems were qualified. Schultz Electric adopted the uh, system three, which is here for our inside containment, uh, uh, random wound, low voltage uh, insulation system. So that would be for like Joey fan motors, inside containment would be a typical application for this. This is the EPRI report. Those of you that are EPRI members can obtain this report and Schultz Electric has adopted it as we help them develop it as well. And these are just some of the technical details details surrounding that insulation system. So we have also raw materials that are specific for the EPRI system that we control, and we control those differently than for our standard, uh, our low voltage insulation system. So each one of those are color coded, as you can see here, and we control those under our nuclear quality program. This would be a typical application for inside containment, a uh, random wound low voltage insulation system where we use the uh, EPRI system. Uh, this is a Joey fan motor. Uh, this is from a plant here in the US where we actually performed a full load test using the fan assembly in our facility. As you can see, the fan assembly was still contaminated uh, with fixed contamination, but we were able to work this as a radiologically um, active component because of our radioactive materials license we have from the new uh, from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission here in the U.S. So this gives you a comparison of the EPRI insulation system, which is in blue. This is the environmental qualification profile. This was one plant here in the U.S. that their profile that we compared it to. And this is the OEM profile here. As you can see, the OEM profile needed some engineering analysis to meet the plant uh, requirements. However, rewinding with the EPRI system enveloped the plant requirement. So Schultz Electric, one of the things that you also want to know is we also supply new motors. We're often thought of simply as a motor repair facility. Uh, we also supply new motors and how do we do that? We work for large motors. We work with sub suppliers that we have uh, that perform design and frame fabric fabrication. 
Uh, we will then wind those motors with our EQ insulation system. And then we will perform uh, final load testing and inspection activities to dedicate those motors under our nuclear quality program. And then we will analyze all of the other materials that we need uh, under separate engineering analysis and dedication process. So what we would do is we would perform final testing. Uh, we validate the thermal characteristics, electrical vibration, speed torque. We've seen examples of that. And then we seismically qualify the motors uh, by analysis in accordance with IEEE 344 and our internal procedure. This would be a typical outline drawing of a motor. Uh, this is an RHR motor that we supplied to a, a nuclear power plant here in the United States. This is uh, an actual photograph of that motor. So this is a brand new motor that Schultz Electric is the OEM. This is a core spray pump motor that we have supplied uh, to a couple of power plants here in the US. One interesting test is right here, this up in the upper right hand corner. This is an underwater high potential test. So for motors that are critical service for EQ, we perform an underwater high potential test after we have VPI, the insulation system. What, the, what that does is ensures the very high integrity of the insulation system. This is a closed cooling water pump motor, Same, very similar. So we have also, uh, in some applications, where you may have non-safety related motors, but these motors run critical, not safety related, but critical applications are, are very difficult to replace. Some customers have opted to use our environmentally qualified insulation systems for high reliability. And usually that pays off with reduced maintenance and reduced replacement intervals for those type of applications. So to summarize, um, during the life of plants, all, all the plants in the world, nuclear power plants are aging. Uh, they will motors will require overhaul, repair, or replacement. Uh, Schultz Electric, uh, has uh, medium voltage and low voltage can supply new motors and spare motors for both EQ inside containment and outside containment applications. We can also repair many motors that OEMs do not offer a service to repair. And new safety related motors are often required for power uprates, plant life extension, aging management, and critical spares, which we are able to do. Uh, one thing that's often overlooked is Schultz is an OEM for new safety related and EQ motors. And one of the key things that's different for the European market is that Schultz Electric has an on-site decon facility so we can work motors that are radiologically contaminated, which we understand is not, uh, not very prevalent in Europe. Uh, we can also offer frame agreements for streamlined motor repair services we would uh, we have yet to execute that in Europe, but we're very interested in that business. And the uh, the closure is basically we you know we offer a quick, reliable, highly reliable, high quality products at a very fair price. And that's it. Yes, thank you very with, much, James. With, with two yeah, minutes to spare, Peter. Sure. Thank you very much, James. Just to remind the audience, in order to ask questions, you can send them in via the questions widget. So just type them into the box at the top right-hand corner of your screen and click Submit. Well, yes, it looks like we have some questions coming through already. So, James, the first question is, do you do refurbishment and re-winging in contaminated motors? Yes, as, as we talked about earlier, for contaminated motors, motors are generally shipped to us that are radiologically contaminated. Our first goal is to try to free release those motors, meaning fully decontaminate them. So uh, probably 95% of the time, 
we can fully free release a motor prior to refurbishment activities. That provides two things. Number one, in our, in our shop, we can work them uh, not in a radiological area, so we can perform all the repairs necessary. Number two, when the customer gets that motor back, if it's a spare motor, it does not have to be stored in a radiologically controlled area. Plus, the shipping is less when the motor gets shipped back. So the answer is yes, we can work them contaminated, but our goal is to decontaminate them to free release if we can. Sure, that's fine, not a problem. Um, also, see for a second question. So basically someone also asked, are you qualified for ISO 19443 nuclear standard and what would this require? Um, my understanding of we, we have not been assessed to that standard yet. My understanding is that's a new um, requirement that is in Europe and there are not many suppliers that have been qualified to that standard. Um, being that we have our nuclear quality program uh, is qualified under 10 CFR 50 Appendix B and ASME NQA1, we do not foresee any issues being qualified to that standard. If a customer wanted to audit us or a governing body wanted to audit us to that standard, we would be open to that. Okay, sure. And also, um, another question is, do you have an estimation of price and rewinding versus new motor in safety-related applications? Um, well, that depends on the motor itself. Um, in some instances, it is, uh, I would say, at the margin. So when you're buying the service, Sometimes rewinding and repairing a motor can be more expensive than buying a new motor. The, but the issue is, is sometimes the new motor is not available. So if it's an obsolete motor, now the burden will fall on the plant to have to do some engineering analysis or perhaps a modification package that to supplement a new motor that may not be exactly the same as the original. So when you factor in the engineering cost and engineering burden of performing those activities inside the plant, almost always repairing uh, a motor is going to be uh, cheaper than buying, a, uh, than buying a new motor. But there are some instances where it can be, can be expensive. Yes, that is true, depending on Depending on the, the nature of the repair, um, we have repaired some catastrophically failed motors in the past where we had to replace the entire, the entire stator. We had to replace the shaft. We had to replace the rotor. So when you get into a very aggressive repair, um, it can be more expensive. Oftentimes, it's, it's shorter duration for turnaround time, though. Sure, that's fine. Yes, um, just a quick reminder to the audience. We still have some time to take any further questions. So as I just mentioned right now, type your question into the questions widget and we'll definitely be sure to answer any questions. Um, also, Mr. Uh, uh, um, Dean, also one person asked, um, what about hot testing facilities? Could you give us some information? Um, say say again, I did not understand the, uh, the word before facilities. Um, so basically they asked, what about hot testing facilities? Could you give us some information? Hot testing, yes. Uh, we can, if, if a motor cannot be free released um, and it's fixed contamination, we can test the motor contaminated as long as the contamination is fixed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a, a, an example of that was when we looked at the fan motor application. Let me let me just go back. Right, give me one moment. So in this example, containment cooling fan motor. Uh, if you notice, uh, these, this is in a radiological controlled area. Right, it's, it's marked off, it's roped off, but there was fixed contamination. 
So this motor is considered hot, but we were able to test it because the contamination was fixed. So we can, we do have the capability to do that within our facility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question from another person asks, asks, do you qualify the motors to electromagnetic compatibility, EMC, according to IEC 61000 or RG 1.180? We, uh, we have been asked by one customer to do that. Uh, usually that's for an emission requirement. Um, and typically standard induction motors, if, uh, for instance, if you have a motor in the plant that has been operating, uh, the motor, the replacement motor that you get will be no different than that. So the change in EMC should not be different. We can test it to those requirements if needed. Uh, we have not been asked to as of yet. I, I do under I do see that requirement coming uh, often now in new motor specifications from the U.S. I have not seen it for new motors in Europe yet in any specification, but if it's required, we can do it. Okay, sure, that's fine. Okay, just a quick word out to the audience. If you still have any questions, you can send them in via the questions widget. We still have ten more minutes left of this webinar. So, also, James, another person asked, do you have any experience in supplying products in Europe? Yes, we do. Um, we have uh, been very active uh, in Spain, supplying new motors, repair of motors, um, and we have been doing that for approximately four years. So, we have, we have supplied uh, new medium voltage motors for charging pump applications. We have repaired several Joy fan motors, uh, and we have supplied some smaller, well, I will call them NEMA frame motors, meaning these are motors less than 250 horsepower for various fan and pump type applications. So yes, we have. Okay. Um, also, what is the typical design life of a motor before failure, and how regular are they inspected? Uh, usually the inspection criteria is dependent upon the plant procedures. If we supply a new motor, we will give some recommendations for preventive maintenance requirements, such as vibration analysis. If it happens to be a motor that is an oil lubricated bearing, we would give some requirements uh, for oil uh, for oil testing for the lubrication, um, and the the require the life of it typically is going to depend upon the in use application of the motor. For instance, many very critical applications such as safety injection pump motors only get operated during uh, testing times, right? So those are only for a nuclear accident. Those motors should be expected to last the life of the plant. So if the plant is licensed for 40 years or 50 years, then those would typically last the life of the plant because they are not under continuous operation. If you have a motor that's continuously operating, such as in a fan application like inside containment, so it's a cooling fan that's running all the time, typically, you should get 20 to 30 years out of that motor. Um, again, it depends on what environment is it operating in. If it's an operating in a uh, high temperature environment, for instance, if it's above 50 degrees C normally, then that motor is going to have a shorter life. So there's many factors that, uh, that factor into the life of a motor. Um, a lot of them is going to be the maintenance, the environment that it's operating in, uh, bear, uh, bearing replacement intervals, oil. So there's a lot of factors. So there's really no one single answer for that. Sure, that's fine. Okay, yes, thank you very much, James. And just a quick reminder to the audience, if you didn't get your question answered, they will be available at a later date. So that just leads me to thank Mr. James Dean for what a great presentation and to show the electric for sponsoring this, this session. To all the attendees, you will receive an email shortly telling you how you can access the on-demand version of this webinar. 
or you can access it through our site, which is www.business-review-webinars.com. So we look forward to sharing further webinars with you. So please do keep an eye out on our website, as just mentioned, and follow us on Twitter at BRW Webinars for daily updates and join our LinkedIn group, Instant Review Webinars. So thank you once again for attending this webinar, and I hope you all have a nice day. I would like to thank everyone as well. Thank you. Thank you.